much hallelujah isn't that great the presence of god the presence of god i want to talk to you about what you see on the screen right now and i pray that you're I, that you're not that you're you're right here with us <laughs> as even though we've done a lot of all, had a lot of church already and i want to but i want to share some word with you today hallelujah god is good amen, amen. glory to god so the this last week, I was away at a ministers and uh, a pastors and men's uh, prayer summit. It was a pr- tremendous time. It was not a time without challenge, but it was a it was a time that God really blessed. The presence of God. We did a lot of singing and a lot of praying, a lot of singing and a lot of praying, and we prayed for each other and a lot of things. There wasn't a whole lot of preaching that happened, although a lot of word was shared, but maybe not in any formal sermon. But a lot of word was shared. But we had a lot of time in the presence of God, and God was so real, it was so wonderful. You know, it's, it's, uh, we're just like you pastors, ministers of the gospel, we're all the same in some ways. We're all just like you, that we all have human needs, right? And we all have times where the spiritual battle says, get away for a couple days, right? <laughs> you know, and the, but those times are run- wonderful, and I appreciate the Indiana District uh, putting those things together, and our new superintendent, Chad McAtee, and his wife, were, who are on that magazine back there in the back, uh, are they are they were there to kind of help lead it well she he was she stayed away because it was a men's event but anyway she was she was there doing paperwork but that was it but uh but we had just a good time but while i was there uh i'd had a lot of conversations with various pastors about things they're teaching and preaching from their pulpit and all that kind of thing and none of them mentioned exactly what i'm talking about this morning but it was just basically the thought that uh, just some good solid teaching and time in the word of god you know i'm i love brother bob and i miss him i hope he can get his wife and baby back here i heard from him this morning that they're still having to run through some a little bit of a few more hoops <clears throat> which uh, did you have this no i didn't know i needed that you know that kind of thing oh did you did you bring this this time you didn't tell me last time i needed that and so he's having to go through some of these steps you know and so all that kind of a thing. But I, I don't preach like Brother Bob, but that's all right. I guess I could run down here and go back and forth and do this, but that's not how I do it. Anyway, <laughs> and I love how he does it. But, but, you know, here's the deal. The Word, the Word. We just want the Word, amen, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, and for you to deliver it in the way that God wants you to deliver, to deliver it. Amen. I know we got people in our church now that... Uh, that uh, I like to go out and pray with people as they meet them, and that's a wonderful thing. Encountering people that are not expecting to get the gospel brought to them, and they're like, wow, you mean God really cares? That's a wonderful thing. And then all the other things, the different ones that they have on your heart as your, as your direction in life, your gifting, your emphasis. And, you know, that's what makes the body, right? I don't need 14 or 15 index fingers. I only need two, right? And I don't need uh, uh, 25 or 30 ears. <laughs> I got two. So in other words, what I'm saying is, is what you do is wonderful because it adds to what we do together, right? Do you get me? And what you do is wonderful because it adds to what we all do together. Amen. Is anybody a little stuffy in here this morning? Or is it just, just me? You are a little bit. I'm going to get, I'm probably off camera here. I'm sorry about that, but. Let's get some air moving around in here in just a little bit. And I'm going to dump it down just one degree. Hallelujah. You won't freeze, I don't think you will. I want to talk to you about the basic steps, the basics. But today, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to preach to you about repent and believe. Repent and believe. And you see up there on the screen, We've got three different situations where people are praying. This guy's on his face before the Lord at a, at maybe up at the edge of the platform or an altar. Guy in the middle is with a group was extending his hand, worshiping or praying or seeking God. And over there on the right, you see a bunch of people down on their face, down on their knees, seeking God. How many of you know we need to do some more of that? Amen. Friends, oh my Lord. I used to be able to get Brother Leon to come and pray with me on Tuesdays and Thursdays. He went to heaven. 
Now I need somebody else to be my prayer partner. Anyhow, uh, we, we want to get it to where we're eventually really a praying people that we spend time, say, seek. Yeah, it's wonderful to worship like we just did. Oh, I love that. But it's another thing where we also then say, we're going to pray. We're going to storm the, we're going to storm hell, take away from hell and receive the blessing of God. Amen. And pray prayers of intercession and, and breakthrough for ourselves and other people. And so we got to do that. I'll read you that scripture. Repent and believe. Mark chapter 1, 14 and 15 says this. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. And this was one of the first messages Jesus preached when he went out preaching the gospel. He says, repent and believe the gospel. So I want to take a few minutes to talk about that today. You know, and sometimes when you say the word repent, people think, oh, well, what kind of, which one of his pet sins he's going to hit on today? What, and what, how's he going to try to pick on us? And I'm not talking about that today. What I'm talking about is what you need to do to adjust your steps in your walk with the Lord. Amen. And so we are going to talk about that just a little bit today. Amen. God is good. The basic steps, repent and believe. But anyhow, he went out and he said, it's time. The time's fulfilled. God's kingdom is there. God's kingdom is there. When you're near to the kingdom of God, there's something that just seems to be a basic message we really need, which is repent and believe. And repent is basically saying not only to say, oh, God, I'm a sinner, forgive me, but it's to say, oh, God, if there's anything out of whack in, this, in my walk with you, if my steps are out and need some adjustment, if my attitude and direction and my priorities need some kind of adjustment, Lord, that's repentance too. And so we're talking about that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh. Well, I don't know why we're not doing anything, but. Okay. Oh, there we go. Why are these the basics? There's no relationship without trust. So repent and trust. Repent and believe. Why are these the basics? Because there's no relationship without trust. I can't be your friend and you can't be my friend if we don't believe what each other says. Right? I don't I can't be your friend and you can't be my friend if we can't tell, say something to each other and trust that we're trying to be honest and truthful with each other, right? Right? I'd almost rather sometimes occasionally it wasn't an easy truth to hear, but at least it was real, right? And so that's why sometimes preachers gotta preach the word even if it's uncomfortable uh to somebody. There's no relationship without trust, so that's why repentance and faith is important. You've got to believe your friend. You got to have confidence in, in the relationship that if I know that you say you'll be over there tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to show up and help me on with something, that, that you won't say, uh, later that day, oh, I forgot, man, I, I just slipped my mind. Well, okay, maybe you got too much. I used, oh, I went to Bible college years ago, and we had some guys that still use slick stuff in their hair, and, and, and Brother Hollinsworth would say he got too much uh, brill cream in his hair, and it slipped his mind. Anyway, whatever, I don't know. You, you don't even know what I'm talking about. But anyway, we got to, but you got to be able to have confidence in your friend, and over time, trust grows, right? You know, when you get a new friend... It takes you a while to know just where that friendship's going to go, don't you? When you run into somebody and you find a new brother and sister in Christ or you come to a new church or whatever and you're running into people, it takes you a little while to have a real feeling about, well, where's this relationship going? You know, and it doesn't have to just be husband and wife stuff, just friends, you know, brother and sister in the same church. Where's this relationship going? Well, after a while of noticing you have a good spirit, you keep a positive attitude. You're a person of faith. You always seem to express love to one another. And, and uh, you're reliable to do what you say you'll do. Then after a while, it's like, man, well, I can really be his friend. He can be my friend. She can be my friend, whatever. And because there's this honesty and trust between us, I can count on him or her. Amen. Well, God wants you to know. He wants to, to express that you believe you can count on him. Amen. I can count on you, God. You're never going to let me down. And some of the songs we sang this morning, you know, it just said over and over again about he won't fail us. 
and he and he, he's come, going to come through for us all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, so trust survives many tests. If you really have trust with somebody, with God, with one another, then it'll be tested, won't it? Right? Do I need to turn the air, air down to 20 degrees? <laughs> Everybody still here with me? You, if you have a relationship with somebody, your trust is going to be tested every once in a while, isn't it? Right? Okay. I mean, so like Pastor Winters, do I trust him? Well, first of all, Brother Joe would tell you if I was doing something funny with the money, and I'm not. <laughs> or if I said something to you, and I betrayed your trust, or if I uh, was like, one day I'm hot with you, another day I'm cold with you, one day then I'm moody, and some days I love you, and some days I don't, that would be kind of difficult to deal with, wouldn't it? But that's why we try to just be steady and love each other and be on a consistent plane that we love each other, we believe each other, and so you can have a trust in me and we can have trust in each other as we express that kind of a thing. And so, uh, repent. So we try talking about trusting. You can't have a relationship without trust and also, or in other words, belief. Believe. Also, Repent. Repenting in regards to relationship means that we adjust our steps so we can walk together, right? That's right. Our hearts move together. And you, you know, I've been married a while. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a few years. <laughs> we've got a big one coming up. Oh, November. But with all of that, you know, we've had to adjust our steps. Uh, steps. And my wife's done a better job of it than I have a lot of time. But I'm trying, I'm really working on it, praise the Lord. To adjust my attitude and steps and priorities to where we can really feel like we're pulling together and loving each other and on, on the same team, right? And so that's how you need to approach God, that we're I'm trusting you and, and I, I'm, I'm adjusting my steps. The Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed, right? You've heard that scripture? You can't, if one, one guy wants to get out on the road and go north and the other guy wants to get on the road and go south, you can't be walking together. <laughs> Unless one of you says, okay, I'll change my mind. I'll go that way or whatever. But So I want to ask God to help me, Lord, to always examine my heart, my mind, my, my attitudes, my methods, my, my uh, motives, and adjust my steps. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, what happened here? All right, I need to go back once. Oh, there we repent. Oh, did you help me with that? I must be having trouble with this today. Thank you. Repent. Oh, well, let's define it. Uh, number one, to turn from sin and to dedicate oneself to the amending of one's life. In other words, I'm going to quit that behavior. I'm going to quit that attitude. I'm going to leave those relationships that pull me away from God. And I'm going to change my direction in life. I'm going to amend my life. In other words, change it. In other words, turn to. I'm turning from sin and turning to God. Right? You know, when I got married to my wife, I turned to my wife and away from other ladies that I might have dated in my past life. I, and we, I dedicated, I turned to the com commitment to family life. And away from this bachelor life that made it all about me, right? You have to turn and say, this is how I want to go now. The way, the, the right way, so this can work together. Number two, to feel regret or contrition. To change one's mind. You know, Billy Graham would say that repentance means to change your mind. And, you know, it's, it's not more than just, well, I, one day I'm thinking one thing and the next day I'm thinking something else. It's to really try to reframe the way you look at life and things and relationship. There you go, brother. It's, a, it's the, I'm willing to let God re, re, transform me by the renewing of my mind, Romans chapter 12. Amen? Okay, go ahead, God. If I'm not thinking right and if it's getting me off the path with you and, and get me out of sync with my brothers and sisters, then, Lord, I'm willing to let you... Make me think better. And, you know, Joyce Meyer wrote a book a long time ago called The Battlefield of the Mind. And so with that battlefield of the mind, I've heard other preachers say this too, that most of your battles are won or lost between your ears. <laughs> Somewhere between here and there. So our thinking so much is wrong. We've got to be transformed by what? The renewing of our mind. And to think the, a way that we haven't thought before. You know, when you grow up in a certain environment, certain family with certain dynamics, certain personalities, certain priorities, then you think in line with what that is. But if what if you come up, you grow up and come into the world, and, and you find out, wow, what, how we had it at home doesn't work out there in the world. 
and they have to adjust my approach to life. Or what we thought was good dynamics in the home, well, it doesn't really work with my relationship with God. I'm going to have to see it differently, right? Are you willing to let God help you see things differently? See it the better way, the way of life and hope and holiness, amen? I'm willing to let him show me that and let me see it a different way, praise God. I don't know if I'm doing it or if you are. Core gospel message. Well, it's part of the core gospel message pre- that you believe and repent. We believe and repent. So when they went out and they preached that people, they preached that people should repent. When Jesus sent them out, he gave them the anointing. He sent them out, uh, you know, a certain number, and then he sent out more later on, and he says uh, that you should go out and preach that they should repent. So they went out, his disciples, and preached that people should repent. Now, what kind of welcome, listen, what kind of welcome message is that to people that have never heard the message before? And you go to them and say, hey, I'm here. I love God. God loves you. So I'm here to tell you, you got to change. Nobody likes change, right? And nobody's quick to accept it unless they really see a reason for it. Unless they, unless you show them, wow, yes, yeah, some things do need to change. How many think anything needs to change in America today? Wow, no kidding. From Washington, D.C., across the nation, one, one coast to the other, north to the south. We need a lot of more people serving God, loving God, repenting and, and living in holiness and righteousness. America, I just say this to you, friends, God's going to have to do a big work in America. Until we just, until a lot of things since the last election brought a lot of corruption to surface in America, a lot of us didn't know how bad it was. A lot of us didn't know how bad it was. How bad America really was. It's a good country. It's still, God, it's still a wonderful things you can say about this great country. I love it. But what I'm saying is, we didn't know how many people were taking bribes and graft and were doing things under the table and smiling at you and telling you, give me your vote and I'll go there and do what's right for the people. And then they go there and do what's right for them and, and what's wrong for the people. And so, it's just, you and I had hopefully got our eyes open a little bit, right? And so, but it's just, we're going to have to have Jesus or else, right? Going to have to have Jesus or else from every, from the White House to the Congress to the courts to every governor's mansion to every mayor's office, amen, right? Every town council and every home of every believer, well, you run your little, you run your little uh, government in your house, or somebody is the mayor and somebody else is the assistant mayor. And then somebody. <laughs> so they went out and preached to people who should everywhere should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. So you see, when you get this thing of repentance going, you can clear the way for the power of God to be in demonstration, right? When you say, okay, God, I repent. I want to get... Uh, obedient to you. I want to get my thinking in line with you. And, and Lord, I want to walk in harmony with you. And I want to put you first. And I love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I love my neighbor as myself. When you get in line with that kind of thing, you repent and get in that line. Guess what? The power of God can show up. Amen. We're not saying you earn it. What we're saying is you, you're getting out of the way of what God wants to do. You know. And sometimes we are in the way and we need to get out of the way. Repentance clears the way for what God wants to do. Your repentance in your life. Saying I'm sorry to your spouse if you have been wrong. Well, clear the way for good things to happen in your family, right? Right. And even to your kids. You know, my kids are all grown up. I've had to apologize to them about a couple of things. And I mean, you know, just because I, I wasn't born perfect and I never got there yet. And when I was raising them, I wasn't perfect. And I'm still not. So anyway, every once in a while you do something that you think is right and it isn't. So you have to say, oops, I'm sorry. Forgive me. So all that kind of thing. It allows relationship to go forward when you get offenses out of the way, right? It allows relationships to go forward if you care to get offenses out of the way. Don't, to not carry an offense to be offended with somebody the rest of your life. I've seen families where like brother and sister wouldn't talk to each other for decades over some little thing that if you look back at it, you thought, that? You mean you let that destroy your unity and your connection with your blood relatives, your family? You let that get in the way of what should have been this? Get it out of there. Ask God to forgive you. And if you're guilty of any of that thing, ask him to show you so that you can 
Amen. Do something about it. Active in Acts. The word repent. Then Peter said to them, I'm saying repent first, then we'll get to believe in a minute. Uh, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's in the book of Acts. He says, repent so you can receive God's best. That's what he said. And says, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. But he said, repent and you can get the gift. In other words, when, your hand, when you repent, you're doing like this. Lord, I open my hand to you. Which is, I allow you to take anything out that you want to take out. And then my hand's open and empty where he can put something into it. Amen? And so I say, oh God, I repent. And he says, let me then, in that, that atmosphere of faith and release and, oh, and openness and honesty, you can receive the best from God. 319 says, repent, therefore, and be converted. Repent and be changed. That your sins may be blotted out, that, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Converted. Well, another word for that is born again. Right? Born again. Born again. I, I'm so glad that I got born again. Born again. There's really been a, that old song. It's 40 years old. Born again. There's really been a change in me. Born again. Just like Jesus said. Born again and all because of Calvary. I'm glad, so glad that I've been born again. And he came in and made a change because I said, I got to have a change, help me. And he said, I'm here to do it. And he just came on in to become my Lord and Savior and live in my heart. I'm so thankful that I, my daughter's sitting down here today and, and with her husband and it, you know, things in our family. I'm so thankful. And to see you guys raising your little ones and any of you bringing your little ones into the house of God, it's so wonderful to see that passed on to the next generation. 1730 says, Acts 1730, truly these times of ignorance God overlooked. It had in means in the time past, there were times when God overlooked a lot of sin because people didn't know. But he said, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. There was a time God overlooked some things, and he said, I'm not doing it anymore. Especially now since his son paid the price on that cross and rose from the dead, and he's at the right hand of God to make intercession for you and me. Because of all that's happened, he's no longer going to say, well, I'm winking at your sin. He's God said, I'm looking at your sin now. You need to repent. Anybody? Amen. Amen. He made the way, so you've got to honor that way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Acts 26, 20 says this, but declared first to those in Damascus and those in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God. So repent, repent be converted, changed. Repent, turn to God. You turn it away from yourself and your own life and turn into God. Repent, turn to, turn to God and do works befitting of repentance. In other words, let your works and your life and the way you, you live your life prove that you really honestly embrace the change of heart and a change of mind and a change of direction and a, and a new relationship with God. Because it's one thing to say, I believe. It's another thing to, to live, I believe. To say, I repent, but to live, I repent. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's revealed in Revelation. Active in Acts, revealed in Revelation. And so it says, Revelation 3.19, as many as I love, I rebuke. <laughs> Sometimes he loves me a lot. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> he loves me all the time. But you know what I'm saying. Sometimes that, he's, he's loving on me a lot. And, uh, and that's probably because I need it and deserve it. But anyway, Revelation 3.19, as many as I love, I rebuke. I rebuke. Don't do that. Stop that now. You know you can't get away with it. You know that's the wrong attitude. You know you can't do business like that and be a, an honest Christian. You know, you know you can't treat your wife like that. You know you can't treat your husband like that. And you know we're not always going around and looking at each other's lives and telling each other, pointing fingers. We don't want to do that. But every once in a while there's an opportunity when the Lord says, tell your friend, your good friend who knows that you love him, that there's something that the Lord wants to talk to them about in their life. And do it with love and no pride, humility, and people don't mind it. If somebody walks up to you and points their finger in your face, you don't like it as much as if they come up and put their hand on your shoulder. 
and say, brother, can I talk to you? Instead of, hey, you. <laughs> hey, brother, sister, can I talk to you? I feel like the Lord wants me to speak to you about something. No, you, don't, you can't do that kind of thing all the time. Anyhow, nobody wants you intervening in their life all the time. But what you can do is if it's the right time and God says so, occasionally there's times to do that sort of thing. But you better be led of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Right? Zeal for God. Leaving, he says, therefore be zealous and repent. Be zealous and repent. If you've got a zeal for God, I want God. I want God. I want more of God. I want more of God. I want God to have my life. I really want to know uh, him and uh, experience him and his power and have a life that's just full of God. I really want God to, to be in full of my life. So I'm going to be zealous to repent. I have a zeal. Some people, I have a zeal to preach. I have a zeal to witness. I have a zeal to get up and sing. But do you have a zeal to repent? That drives you to an altar or to your prayer closet or a time on your knees and say, God, God, this ain't going right. Something's got to change. Please, God, show me in my heart and in my mind and my words and my deeds. Show me somehow, God, what I should do better, how, I, something I need to do differently so I can be in tune with you. Amen? And, and that's something important, important thing to know. All right. Praise God. Amen. Uh, Repent and believe. So we talked about repent. Uh, repent and believe is the title of the message today. We read that scripture again that we read at the beginning. Uh, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe. You know, it doesn't, it's not enough to believe. When you first come to the Lord or anytime things are out of whack in your life or you, if you've just come out of being lost in sin, you can't just believe. You've got to repent and believe, right? I mean, the two got to go together. Repent and believe. Oh, I got all the faith, faith to move mountains, all faith to do all kinds of big stuff, you know, and speak healing over everybody. Well, that's a wonderful thing. I hope you do that, and we want to do that. But I want to know this, that if there's not some repentance that's kind of gone before that, uh, you know, and again, repentance is not always just saying, Oh, God, I'm a miserable sinner. I'm so sorry for my sins. You know, so there might be a time like that in your life. But uh, repentance, by and large, if you're a child of God who's been trying to walk with God, repentance just means adjusting your walk, changing, your, fine-tuning your direction with God. But as, but, and believe, and uh, repent and believe the gospel. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say to you that whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Anybody ever heard that? That when, while you're in the process of asking your petition, and as you're saying amen, I believe now, today, I receive that. It's mine. Thank you, God. I receive it today. Lord, we need extra number of dollars for something coming up in the church or in the family. And Lord, we know that you supply every need according to riches and glory. We've been good tithers and givers, and we just take, thank you, Lord. So we say, Lord, and now I receive that you have made that provision for me. Or Lord, uh, somebody needs healing and, or whatever. And Lord, and I thank you in the name of Jesus that their word says, by your stripes were healed. You took my infirmities. You bore my sicknesses. And so in the name of Jesus, as I conclude this time of prayer and say amen, I'm saying, thank you. I believe I receive. Believe. Receive. Goes together. Amen. Believe and receive. And you know, I'm just going to warn you this, and you know this is true. The devil's always going to try to plant doubt in your mind. Give you somebody else said it didn't work for them, or you never know exactly where somebody else's heart is as far as their faith and their belief. You never know exactly everything about an individual's life as to don't know why maybe they tried, things didn't work as well for them. And maybe... Maybe what it is is they need, we need more teaching. More teaching from the pulpit that says, if you've got an active living faith and take action of faith, God's going to come through for you. Amen? And I think you can know the will of God. So people say, well, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. And I want you to know this, friends, that if God made Adam and Eve and if it was per his perfect will for them to walk around sick all the time, he would have created them sick. He didn't. That didn't come in until sin. And I'm not saying if you're sick, you got sin. I'm saying sin is in the world, so sickness is in the world. And so because of that, we just got to have more confidence and boldness and stand on specific scriptures. He sent his word and he healed me. He forgives my iniquities, heals all my diseases, all those good things. You need to know those. So believe. So believe that you receive and you'll have it, it says. Believe you're receiving. That's, sorry for that small print on there. Believe and be saved. 
He said, believe and receive, now believe and be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart uh, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Do you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead? Or do you think he's still over there laying in a tomb somewhere? You know that he's alive, right? And so you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you confess with your mouth that he's Lord. Can everybody here today say with me, Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is my Lord. Well, I think we got it then. Hallelujah. So, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Hebrews 10, 38, now the just shall live by faith. But if anybody draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. I'm going to talk about that again in a minute, so I'll move on from that. Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, I, I know what time it is there. I'll be patient with me here. I didn't get this still, you know. So, amen. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't want you to believe God. Do you know that? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, whose minds, the God of this world, the God of this age, has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. King James says it's slightly different. So the Satan says, I'm going to blind them, and they won't see. And the truth will be right in front of them, and they still won't see it. And the opportunity of salvation and forgiveness and new life will be right there, right there before them, but they're not going to see it because I'm going to blind them. That's what Satan does. Have you ever witnessed to a friend and you thought, <laughs> you thought that the Holy Spirit was saying it's time to talk to this person, and for all the, your efforts and prayers, they just couldn't seem to get it. Just couldn't get it. Well, don't give up. Keep praying. Keep believing. And witness whenever the Lord tells you it's time. But my soul, it says here, uh, and also in Hebrews 10, 38, talking about the devil not wanting you to believe. It, my, it says here, but if anyone draws back, my soul, God's saying, if you pull away from me, if you back off, if you cool off, if you backslide, I'm, I'm not having any pleasure in you. So what he's saying, you got to keep pressing in. You ever have a day when you felt like, man, uh, today is one of those days that's kind of hard to believe. I mean, it's hard to keep my faith in intact because of all that's coming at me or whatever. Well, you just have to say, I disregard my feelings. I disregard my moods. I disregard the circumstance and say, God is faithful and he's still with me today and everything's going to be all right every step of the way. Amen? you got to do that. Come on, friends. But we're not going to draw back under perdition. That means pull away from God and find judgment. But of those who believe to, our, to the saving of the soul. And I, I don't have time to really go into this to talk to you about this, but soul salvation. When you get born again, your spirit is renewed instantly. But your soul, which is uh, your spirit, is your, your mind, emotions, and will. Those things take a while to transform and change. In other words, changing your thinking, changing your emotions and how they react to stuff. That takes a while. So, anyway, so, so don't draw back. Keep your faith and keep it active. Amen. In Jesus' name, faith and love. This is where we got to move as our last little bit here. First John 3.23 says, and this is his commandment. That we should believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We talked about repent, repent. Now we're talking about believe, 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 okay? And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of Jesus Christ, his son, and love one another. As he gave his commandment. So love and belief goes together. And the Galatians 5, 6 says that faith works through love. Faith works by love. So if you are not loving, your faith ain't going to be working. Right? If you don't love, you can forgive and, and, and stop holding grudges and resentments. And if, if, you, if you don't love, then your faith's going to, you know, the Bible even tells men, listen, guys, the Bible even tells men, treat your wife with respect or it'll, or it'll hinder your prayers. That's a paraphrase, but the Bible says it. Treat your wife with respect or it will hinder your prayers, right? Because you can't be mean to your wife and then go out and go to then go to church the next day and say, "Oh God, I'm here. I really want to move a God in my life." And he said, "God says, remember how you said what you said to your wife yesterday? 
Well, women can be guilty of it too, but I'm saying generally it's the guy that's the mouthy one. <laughs> anyway, so hallelujah. So how many of you got to be ready to repent, turn towards God, open and get offenses out of the way so we could have a relationship with each other, right? And have us ready to really believe, trust God with everything, and show trust and confidence in relationships and honor one another. Show integrity, be reliable, be trustworthy with each other, amen? If we'll do that, it's going to be great. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, God, for doing your great work in us today, Father. Thank you, Lord, what worship brought into this sanctuary a little bit ago. And thank you, Lord God, for the, what, what this time in your word has brought to us, oh God. Don't everybody start looking at the back door yet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to ask you to bow your head for just a minute. If uh, you've had a rough week, a rough few days, and you just really need God to, to help you with something, and you struggle with maybe something in line with this repentance and faith that, and belief that I've talked about, uh, you don't have to, you just everybody bow your head and just let me know by lifting up your hand. I've been struggling with believing, or I've been struggling with being willing to say I'm sorry when I needed to, or things like that, anybody here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, I know it's probably true, whether we say it or not. So I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, help our friends. Help us to all be willing to make adjustments to the walk, to let us be renewed in the spirit of our mind so that we don't think the wrong way and treat people the wrong way and, and relate to you in the wrong way, God, that we repent. Oh, God, and if we do have any hidden secret sin in our lives, that we will say, God sees it, so I got to get rid of it. Amen. God sees it. Father, you, you see everything about my life. So if there's anything in there that I think nobody knows but you and me, then Lord, you and me know about it, so I got to do something about it. So get rid of that. And Father, I want to trust in you, have faith in you, believe your word, pray in faith, declare faith. Amen. Pray and, and, and witness in faith. Amen. And, and believe God for healing in faith and for, and for every need to be supplied and for everything. Lord, I exercise my faith to you right now. Lord God, I also want to have a faith in my wife, in my relationship, and our trust for one another. Amen. Yes, Lord. And so we just thank you, God, for that. Anybody, 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 before I let you dismiss, say, I need prayer for anything. Lift your hand up for any prayer for anything. If that's you, I know... I know, but anyhow, all right, hallelujah, so we love you, friends, everybody look at me, I love you all, <laughs> we love one another, right, family, we are family, anyway, yeah, something like that, but we're so glad for that, and we're so glad that you're part of this church family, and I want to ask you to do something this next week, find one friend, or some acquaintance on the job or something, you can tell them about Jesus, and then while you're at it, maybe think to tell them about where you go to church, okay? Because one way the churches grow is that you like it enough that you tell somebody, right? Well, I kind of like that church. The pastor's okay, too. I like that church. And so, and you'll tell people, witness, invite, you got to do it, okay? And if you know somebody in town that's got uh, kids that need to belong to it, go to a youth group, uh, let us know about them, and we'll ask Rick, Nick, <laughs> Rick, Rick, we'll ask Nick to reach out to them, and Nick and Haley, to reach out to them and contact them, amen? Right? Because this is how we're going to grow, because you're going to say, I like it. I want to tell somebody about it, amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother, Sister, Sister Wanda, I'm going to ask you to dismiss us in prayer this morning, if you would, please.